What is your guys' go-to reception song that has to be on the playlist if they're going to be doing a reception? Return of the Mac. What it is, what it is, what it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> the cha-cha slide, man. That's oh, the that's my no. name, that's Ryan. <laughs> to the left. Yeah, to the right. Like, but whatever. everyone knows it. Crisscross. <laughs> <laughs> the whitest dance song you've ever been a part of. What's going on, guys? My name is Ryan Snod. It rhymes with odd, and you're listening and watching the Rhymes with Odd podcast. Today, we're tuning in with two more guests for the show. Today, the owners of Jade and Ivy Events, Kayla and Kenzie. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. So this is kind of a fun one. We're, we're going to be talking about new things, but this, this business is new. You guys, I would say, just launched it this year, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about kind of what that is and everything, and talk about your backstories, how you met. But before we get into it, does somebody want to courageously explain what Jade and Ivy Events is to someone that's never heard of it before? That's on you. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is how the dynamic works. She has the best, like, <laughs> elevator pitch for us. <laughs> you do. Um, so, yeah, Kayla and I met um, in 2021 working together in our full-time jobs and really just kind of hit it off. We have pretty similar backgrounds, personal stories. Um, Obviously, we were working um, in the same department, so same kind of professional ideas. And the more we got to know each other and the more we started working together, um, we kind of figured out we were like yin and yang and we complemented each other well and had a lot of personal interests. So um, in our professional work, we did a lot of like planning, logistics and stuff, um, more so like treatment wise um, in recreational therapy and really started to learn through that process, you know, what do our patients like to do? What are their abilities? Um, What are things that are hindering them? And then through recreational therapy, we're able to help get them back to doing that stuff again or coming up with modifications and stuff so that they can do it. So um, after doing that for five, six years, um, we're just kind of like, what do we like to do? And Kayla and I love that process. We both love our, the wedding process. We had wonderful experiences in our marriages um, so far, the wedding planning process, all of that. And a lot of the, the same I guess, logistical things that go into planning programs and treatment plans for patients is the same as it does for weddings and and that sort of thing. So we kind of threw around a lot of different ideas that stem around those basic things and kept kind of shooting ourselves in the foot because it just seemed like a really big far off dream starting a Mm -hmm. business. We have no experience in that. Like, well, what if we pivot and what if we do this? And it was like a safer thing. And then we'd always get back to like what the wedding thing. And then we talk about that for a bit and then, you know, and it kind of just cycled. And finally one day we were just like, you know, let's just do it. We have been helping people get back to doing the things they love and finding their passions for six years in our career. And, um, let's just take a chance on ourselves and try to do it for ourselves. And so we officially launched, um, I guess uh, November 20th of 23 and our EIN finally came in December 20th but we were insured as of December 1st we had our first um, event at the end of December and so really I mean we've been like two and a half months into just trying to figure out how we make this thing legit and Mm -hmm. how to do marketing and build a website and do all these different things that we were not trained to do but it's been a a labor of love and it's been really fun to just learn through the process. Sure no it's really fun to hear and I think we'll, we'll talk more about everyone's experiences I know my personal connection to this group here is like Kenzie and I went to Simpson together we refed intramural games and played and stuff. So it's kind of fun to see people's career arc. I think that's mm-hmm. my favorite part of this whole podcast is like seeing people's path because it's never linear. It's always no. like right. something happens and then life happens and this happened and then you just kind of like zigzag through and then you end up where you're at, which is really fun. But um, before we get into that, what like explain to me what where you guys came up with the name Jade and Ivy? Maybe Kayla will kick this one to you here. <laughs> Darn it, we, the knew. <laughs> we were texting about this last night. Kenzie, how did we come up with this? Um, honestly, we were just sitting back and forth and we would like text each other. What about this one? How about this one? We didn't really have anything in mind. We know that our vision is, um, we would love to have a venue someday, a wedding venue with brick and greenery and just those really warm tones. So we were leaning towards something with like Ivy or like that was always kind of part of the name, but we just couldn't figure it out. Um, I don't know if you want to share the personal side of it, I guess, or not. Um, is yeah. that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Um, Kenzie's daughter's middle name is Jade. And so then we were trying to incorporate both of all our daughters at the time. Mine just did not fit in there. Her middle name is Rose. Um, and I always joke that we always, I said, oh, what about like the jaded Rose? But it sounds like a tattoo parlor. <laughs> sure. No, I love that. That's a rough, rough and tumble wedding venue. Or there's a pub, like, maybe. Yeah, there's like. Harley's parked out there. Yeah. The wedding's inside. You can get in there. So we decided against that. So we just left her out of it. Maybe she'll be part of the next business. But um, 
honestly, we just finally were like, that was the hardest part of this whole thing was trying to figure out a name. And I think we just wrote down Jade and Ivy probably five different times. And we're like, okay, let's just go with it. And it's just stuck and it fits. And I think it fits um, where we're wanting to go with the business too. Sure. No, I love that. So let's kind of backtrack. We'll talk more about the business in a second, but I want to hear a little bit about your guys' backstories and how, how the heck you guys went from recreational therapy to an event coordination business. Cause it's very different things. Obviously there's tie-ins, but it's like, not the ne- necessarily like a hop, skip, and a jump. It's like, whoa, this is something different. So right. talk to me about how, um, I guess, your backgrounds. We'll start with uh, Kenzie. Tell us a little bit about where you're from um, and then how you came to meet Caleb. So I'm from Oskaloosa, Iowa. Um, born and raised there, graduated there in 2012. And then I went to Simpson for my bachelor's and studied athletic training, psychology, coaching. Um, always knew I wanted to go to grad school. Didn't exactly know what. Um, if you learned anything about recreational therapy, it's that a lot of people just fall into it um, by a happy accident. And I was applying to different um, OT schools for occupational therapy. I thought that's what I wanted to do. And I really liked, you know, the pediatric side of that using play th- in therapy. And then I learned, oh, Rec therapy is a thing, and you can do it not just with kids, but you can do it across all people, all lifespan. So I found a program at, in Philly. I'd never been there. I applied, got in, and I just moved across the country and, and did my master's there. <clears throat> and it turned out to be um, something very unforeseen that was the best thing that I could have done. So then I finished grad school, um, did an internship, started working full time, made my way back to Iowa because um, I was home to me and my family. And, um, yeah, I really loved what I was doing there. Um, I still love it. I'm not currently working as a therapist. I'm more as a hospital administrator now, but my job is really looking at the experience of patients and being able to kind of identify trends and patterns and what's going well and what's not, and then coming up with solutions to fix that. So it's still geared around this whole sense of, um, what is someone's experience? How do we make it better? How do we improve their lives, their quality of life? And so, um, I love that aspect and it's something that we feel very strongly about bringing it into our business at Jade and Ivy, whether that means growing our business and, um, you know, having employees or or getting the venue someday, the culture and the people and the effect and the impact is something that's really important to us. And then also just being able to touch the community in a a special way too. So um, I have this problem of like setting these big, crazy goals. And it's, I don't know, I just love to challenge myself and, and try new things. And so I've always dreamt of having a business. And I don't know, I just, Kayla and I met each other through work and um, had similar passions and we just decided to take it on together. So we're sure. just learning as we go. <laughs> That's awesome. So you were in Pittsburgh for a while. What did, was the goal to come back to Iowa or did you guys kind of think about maybe even staying there after you graduated? Um, <clears throat> well, no. I or was it Philly? Sorry, Philly. Philly yeah, excuse me. No, that's good. Um, Philly was great for the time I was there. It was definitely not a place we wanted to stay long term. And Jordan and I were just kind of like, you know, we I've gotten what I've came here to come, you know, to do. I, I got a great job, had a wonderful education, met some awesome people along the way. But the goal is always to come back home. Um, I was never one of those people that was like, I gotta get out of Iowa. Like I love Iowa. I love the people. I love the size of it. I just the camaraderie. It's just. The, the Midwest is amazing and the school system, all of that too. But um, I do feel like the value I had living in Philly. And then we went to Memphis after that, Tennessee, and was there for a while. I learned a lot and I grew a lot as a person and a therapist. And so I wouldn't trade those things, but it also just made me really excited to come home and, and know the the greatness that the Midwest does have back here. Sure. I love that. So Kayla, tell me a little bit about your, your backstory. What brought you to the point when you met Kenzie? Um, I grew up in Zeering, Iowa, which is tiny little town um and which then which part of iowa it's northeast of ames okay. like 30 minutes oh, okay not too far super far away then yeah okay. no um tiny little town though and then i went to the university of iowa um thinking that i wanted to do something in the medical field um and then kind of like kenzie i actually fell into something different i wanted to be a child life specialist um, which also uses play and, and all of that with kids um, in the hospital. But um, one class changed my mind um, about that pretty quickly. But in order to go to get a master's in child life, you have to get a degree in rec therapy. So um, that's where I started. And then I was like, okay, maybe this is what I want to do. Um, had some other things in my life that made me want to work with the people that I work with now. Um, And so graduated from Iowa, um, 
had an internship there in Iowa City, which led into a job in Des Moines. So we came back closer to home. Um, and then I've been working there now for five years. Um, Kenzie came along, what, three years in, two mm-hmm. years in? And um, just we worked in the same area and worked together almost every single day. And, um, yeah, those conversations just kind of started. Um, obviously Kenzie's very goal driven. And so just seeing that I'm kind of the person who has big dreams, but I'm just, it just have that imposter syndrome of like, okay, well, how do I get there? And then it's just put on the back burner. Whereas Kenzie's just like, okay, but how can we make that happen? How do we do this? What does that look like? And so honestly, like just the two of us, I think, with the dreams and the the passion, it's just really meshed well, and somehow we've figured it out, um, which has been a really cool process to see. I love that. Um, what's been kind of your guys' experience starting this business? Because were you guys, you're still working when you kind of cooked this up. What's kind of the launch pad, the plan to get to the point where you guys want to pursue this full time? Man, we're still trying to figure <laughs> that out. Um, right now, it's all just day of coordination and wedding planning. So it's a lot of, we're still working full time, both of us. So it's a lot of, you know, emailing in the evenings. I know I'm staying up a lot later than I used to (laughs) getting stuff done. Um, Lots of consults, lots of late nights, things like that. Um, Down the road, I don't know what that looks like. You know, we've talked about wanting to open a venue. That's the big, big end goal. Um, Who knows what that looks like, but I think for now we're just happy taking care of our couples and um, learning the industry. I think that was the biggest point of doing this. Um, you know, we hadn't really th- thought about doing wedding planning until we we're like, well, we need to know how to run a venue, so we need to know how weddings go. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's just been a great learning experience and um, seeing kind of the back end of all of that. Yeah. And been we've cool. been super lucky, obviously. Like you've yeah. been super helpful to us, um, and <laughs> sure. we've had just tons of happy accidents and strangers that have been so kind to us that have helped us along the way and and taught us things and have been willing to sit down with us for free or virtually nothing. And, you know, that's something we hope to be able to do for other people too, is just this mindset of community over competition and being able to like help that next person along. Mm-hmm. Um, we're kind of just taking it day by day. Like if it, you know, I would hate and be sad if it crashed and burned tomorrow, <laughs> but like if it did, I'm so proud of what we've done. And like, it is what it is at that point. If it grows to be something so huge, that that's great. Like for me, I don't really have ex- too many expectations on it. Like I'm just grateful and we're just trying to like love and enjoy the journey and the process and just make the best of it, whatever it looks like. Sure. No, I love that. It's a similar path to myself. Like I worked full time for four years before I went off on my own, but I was doing nights and weekends. And then it wasn't like a priority for me until it was. And like for us, it was um, for my wife and I was like paying off all of our debt. So we were mm-hmm. hitting it really hard. And then I was like, oh, I could like do this full time because I've made enough. I could, you know, it's like, well, what do I want to do? And then you have options. I think that's the that's the beauty of what you guys are doing is like you can do this as much as you want. You're like you said, you're not so you're not neck deep in mm-hmm. in uh, risk that you have like, right, we're going to go you know, front a bunch of money and have to get Mm -hmm. investors to buy a building and then renovate it. And then hopefully we make money. It's like, you guys are kind of taking the nice, easy steps to it, which I think is for me, I'm like a risk averse entrepreneur. I hate even saying I'm an entrepreneur because an entrepreneur by nature is someone that takes a bunch of risk and it's like, not really like, that's not what I'm about either. So I think that's a really smart way to go about it. Um, as you guys are looking like for real estate and, and kind of that next step, what what kind of a venue in your guys' mind's eye would you want to create? Because there's a lot of options in Des Moines and mm-hmm. there's a lot of competition. What What's something that you guys would want to create to stand out? Ooh. Well, <clears throat> we'd B- love... Besides a biker bar with a tattoo parlor <laughs> in the back that people can get hitched, like Elvis can marry him in the back. Yeah, or we don't want that. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, we love just like the old, pretty brick, historic kind of... Um, just like something warm, comforting, inviting. We want it to be a place that's open and inviting to like everybody. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people say that, um, but like that truly is like the bread and butter of what we want to do. Like if we make money off this, it's great. If we, if it crash and burns, I mean, it is what it is, but like we want to do this with intention. We want to do it with a purpose to, to not just do weddings and have beautiful events, but to really impact people. Um, the person you marry is going to completely alter the course of your life. And it's a really important and special day, but it's also just a huge, I don't know. I think sometimes we overlook weddings as like 
just the next thing in someone's life, but like it really is such a pivotal thing for all of these families coming together. And so just to have a space where we can honor that and it looks so different to every single family and like getting to know these people, um, you just, they become like family to you in some way. And so being able to have that feel of the building, have it be warm, have it be inviting, but also have it be um, like neutral enough so that you can make it mm-hmm. someone else's style. Like that's really important to us because, you know, if you go to like a rustic barn or something, you're, you're kind of just having a niche client there and like, that's fine. But, um, you know, we want to kind of have a space that really the overarching goal is just, you're, and you're invited, you're welcome, come as you are. Mm-hmm. And then we'll kind of throw some other things in there to kind of make it your own, if sure. that makes sense. Sure. Anything to add? Does that pretty well sum it up? That's perfect. That's great. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting because I've had a unique look at this because um, obviously Paige and I were in the wedding industry. She still is a lot. Um, I do like maybe two wedding videos a year. Not. Mm-hmm. I think the first year I did like 15 or 20. So I've had, I've shot hundreds of them over the years and seen a lot of venues and talked to a lot of vendors. And it's such an interesting space because I always say it's like recession proof because people will still get married. They might trim back their wedding, but they still need a place to get married. So you guys are, right. would be in a good mm-hmm. spot. A lot of people aren't the type A planner type. I am not that person. Thankfully, Paige is. She planned her whole wedding. But um, I could only imagine if there was two of me trying to get married. Like, oh, my God. Like, I don't have the, the patience or the time. I would just hire it out. So I think there's definitely a need for it. It's interesting, though, looking at the mix of venues because, like, we got married at Emerald Hills in um, oh, Russell. Okay. We were, we were a couple six. We went in when they were putting the framing up, and we're like, it looks good. And it was dark, and I, <laughs> I stepped in the plumbing trench and almost broke my leg because oh it was like gosh. it was under construction. It was kind of crazy, but beautiful venue. But to your point, <clears throat> it's very plain in a sense that you can d- dress it up how you want. So yeah. ours was an like, nautical theme because we were supposed to get married on a wedding. Twenty twenty canceled that, so all the stuff. But we could still dress it up to be like it was like you're at the beach, but you could right. also throw up what like Asian decorations. It's like you're hey, it's Chinatown. Like you right. can do whatever you want to mm-hmm. do. So it's kind of nice to have that. So. Um, it's, it's really interesting though, because I obviously got married there and then Scott Wales, um, from Simpson, the classmate of ours and one of my really good friends, um, his dad, um, and his girlfriend have a venue out in, uh, Boone that they have, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm going to forget the name. 18. 68 farmhouse. farmhouse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm we like, know. Yes. So it's, it's beautiful. like, so that was really cool to see from the other side of like, mm-hmm. they took this old, um, farmhouse and barn and completely converted over like three or four years to get it where it is now. So mm-hmm. Again, different different clientele. It's also out of town a little bit. So both of these venues are outside the metro, and they're both doing well. So like mm-hmm. everyone I've talked to that's doing this is like booked out literally every weekend for three years. So it's like the interesting thing about the business, though, and I'm sure you guys have talked about this, and I talked to Kenzie about this, is like your income capped at a certain point, though, because you can only charge, say, $10,000 a weekend. And if you're booked out every weekend, okay, there's 40 grand in revenue. What other ways can we make money? Mm Because then you're going to have staff, you're going to have overhead Mm -hmm. expenses. So that's when you start looking at like alcohol sales or you start looking at upsells or lodging or something. What are some of the things that you guys would, in this mind's eye of a dream, what are some of the things you guys would like to build if this were to become a real thing in terms of a physical place? Mm Mm-hmm. I think that really depends on the venue. Um, You know, right now we're looking at more of rentals and so not something we would own. And then the big, big dream would be to build. Sure. Um, In that, I would love to have lodging. You know, something just came on the market, um, gosh, a few months ago. Can't remember where it was, but it was this beautiful barn with a beautiful old farmhouse attached. Not really our vibe, but just like that same concept of being able to have somewhere for the whole wedding party to stay if they wanted to um, the night before and all of that. Um, I don't know. We haven't really gotten that far, though, with all of those extras. Um, I know we want to make it as inclusive as possible. Um, So even if a couple wants to come to us and rent the space and that's it great. If you want more and we have more, you know, we have the extra decorations, we have the extra staff, all of that. Um, just being able to fit into everyone's budget, I think is what is what we're going for and that you can add what you need or what you want. Um, cause that was one frustration at least I had, I planned, so Jordan and I got married in Iowa, but I was living in Philly. So I planned everything remotely, which, um, was fine. The internet allows you to do that. But, um, so many of these vendors and stuff, like they don't have pricing available. So I yeah. found a ton of wasted time of me as a client trying to reach out and can I get a quote? Can and people would either ghost you or they would respond late or, you know, it's this whole big wasted time process. And so that's something that we feel very passionately about and, 
Like that's just being transparent with our prices and finding ways to obviously at the end of the day, the bills need paid. You need to pay your staff, but also can we make this flexible to fit people's budgets and fit where they're at? And so that's really something that we want to do. And something um, I think that Kayla and I have as skills additionally is like you said, the venue can be rented out, you know, Friday through Sunday. Um, most people are getting married in those three days. Um, what are we doing with the building the rest of the week? Mm-hmm. And Kayla and I are therapists and being able to do contract work and do therapy, you know, Monday through Thursday at the event. Um, I'm a yoga instructor doing yoga classes. Like there's so much stuff and there's so many skills that we have therapeutically that we can use to help benefit the community or being able to like offer our space to um, special Olympics or something, you know, to have like a dinner or do some things like that. Like we want it to be just more than us. Sure. No, I love that. And I think that's a really smart way because there's so many ways you could use that as a flex space to do mm-hmm. an event, boutique thing, a birthday party, what like any, oh, we just need a room, right. you know, but you look at some of these other venues. Like, I, I mean, I keep thinking of like the farmhouse in Boone, um, the one in Russell where we got married, uh, Harper's Vineyard. Um, a lot of these are just kind of remote, but they're like an experience in itself. Mm-hmm. If you guys were to do something in Des Moines proper, like I think of like toast in Ankeny or, mm-hmm. um, the district, I think the um, the venue in the district in Ankeny, I can't think of the name of it. Um, do you guys know? Is it sticking out in your head? Hmm. I think it's called The District. I think it it's is. Like the name of the I know, I didn't venue. want to say that, but I think it is. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like that. that's a unique experience because, yes, it's a space, but it's also attached to a bar. So you don't have mm-hmm. to, like, bring in alcohol vendors. But then, to your point, you're limiting your clientele. You have to get alcohol from our place. You mm-hmm. have to mm-hmm. use our linens, use our... You know, you have to use our catering. Like that was the thing with Paige and I when we were looking, mainly when Paige is looking, but I was like, <laughs> what do we got? What options? She did the research. It's like, well, these places are requiring we use their catering. I'm like, right. nope. Like then they're going to charge a hundred dollars a plate yeah. and mm-hmm. we have 200 guests. Like, okay, that's two grand in food. We didn't have to do, you know, what we wanted to do. We did Olive Garden. We, everyone loved Olive Garden, but it's like, <laughs> we wanted the flexibility. So I can yeah. appreciate that from the client side of it. Like complete options to make it your day. Cause mm-hmm. there's so many right. people like that was my biggest thing that I told wedding couples when I was working with them, like try so hard to like, not let your parents, the venue, anyone tell you how you're going to do this. Like it's your day. Like right. don't let other people force you into something. You know, I think that flexibility is really key. Right. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately when we start talking about budgets and weddings, um, when people can't afford things, they start cutting people. And from our side of things, like we would rather have you, have all of your family there and bring in Olive Garden, then cut 50 of your friends or cousins or whatever, you know? So I think it's just like trying to put business and people into perspective a little bit better. Um, That's kind of our mission and goal is just to like see people, love people and like let them just have that moment. Sure. And in terms of your wedding planning process, what, what were some of the things you liked about it? Cause did you, yeah, I'm assuming you planned your own as well. Yeah. yeah. And what did you like? And then what were some of the things that were kind of like Kenzie's point grinding your gears yeah. about the process? <laughs> yeah. We got married right out of college. And so I was still in my unpaid internship. So our budget was tight. Um, so kind of the same thing. I had a lot of ideas of where we wanted to have our wedding. Um, and then again, you wait a couple days, get that quote back. And then it's like, way over your budget. Um, I think for us, it was mostly the catering, like you said, because Mm -hmm. we knew that we wanted to make our own food. Our family wanted to do that. And rather than spend three, $4,000 on food, we spent like three or 400. Um, but I think also along with that is just, um, not knowing. I always say that if I got married Mm -hmm. again, I won't, but, um, <laughs> maybe um re- remarried, maybe like not remarried, but, um, well, vow renewal. Renewal. Vow renewal. That's, that's, the word. that's the other, an option. The other R word that I can't think of. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Vow renewal. Um, wedding planner, hundred percent because our family was so busy throughout the day that I feel like we didn't get to enjoy the time with them. They were worried about things getting picked up no matter how much we said, we'll worry about it later. That didn't happen. Um, and then someone just to help me make some of those decisions. My husband is great, but he's just like, yeah, that looks great about everything. Like I could have shown him like something like crocodile themed. He would have been like, yeah, I love it. And I just needed we someone. We love a supportive husband. There you go. <laughs> he's yes, like, but, yeah, we're getting but, married down in there. But like, make some crikey. decisions, please. <laughs> so I just think having someone guide me and like, hey, this is a good option or that's actually a terrible idea, Kayla. Maybe we should think about this in nicer ways, of course, but just having some of that expertise, I really missed that. I think, um, I was, we were also the youngest in our friends to get married. So I hadn't been to a lot of weddings at that point. So it was all just kind of 
learning from scratch since then I've learned so much and I mean that was only five years ago and would change so much I loved our wedding days still I think Kenzie and I both say this about our wedding days favorite days ever like the best and all the work that went into it was worth it but there's a lot of things that I I would change about it now that I think we can help kind of bring to light for our couples and already have in some aspects when just chatting and being like, hey, have you thought about this? Or this might work a little bit better. And just having that perspective mm-hmm. has been super helpful. Sure. No, I love that. I know for me, um, there, was there was there certain things about your weddings that you like aspects that you liked a lot that you wanted to pass on to people like the photographer brought you water at this time or the bartenders did this or the the caterers did this, like, were there things that vendors did that you would want to carry on to other clients? Cause that was like that nice little touch that made your day a little bit better as a client now being a vendor. Um, my photographer was bossy and I loved it. Um, <laughs> some of my wedding party did not. And it was me, ma- mainly my sister and my brother-in-law because they were the ones goofing off, right? Like totally fine. But she was like, Nope, we're getting down to business. You guys are paying attention. I loved that because then I didn't have to do it. Sure. And she told me that ahead of time. She's like, I'm just going to tell people where to go. We're going to get this done. I want you to go to your reception and have fun and not just be taking pictures all day. So I really loved that. Again, some of my bridal party did it, but I was just like, hey, take it up with Brenda. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, take it up the chain. Like, I'm not in charge today. Yeah. I, think, I think that's really fun because um, I've had that too where, like, the bridal party is, like, herding cats. They're all, like, drinking. Yes. not t- yeah. It's like, hey, like, I have to literally, like, pull out my teacher voice. I'm like, yeah. mm-hmm. hey, stand in line. I'm like, the yeah. faster we get this done, the faster you guys can get hammered before this reception, <laughs> yeah. okay? I'm like, okay, I like this guy. I yeah. always get that. You so. just got to keep the beer out of the shot. Like, come on, go. let's just, you know, there you, you got to make it through photos and then I don't care what you do the rest of the night. But, sure. yeah, so I love that. Mm-hmm. Sure. What about you, Kenzie? Um, so we got married at Jordan's home church, and then our reception was at the Sea Rapids Marriott. And they had like a, a day of coordinator there that was like helped do all of our stuff. And honestly, I underappreciated her until I started in this business. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I showed up to my wedding and I did nothing besides just enjoy. And after the fact, now that we're in this, this whole business, I'm like, wow, like she did all of this. And we had like 230 people at our wedding. So it was fairly big. Mm -hmm. And like, we didn't have to clean up. We like, I had to do nothing. I just got to enjoy the day. The DJ was great. Um, he kind of came cause Jordan and I are like not line dance people. We were like, we are not doing line dances at our wedding. Don't play them. We don't want them. And then those crazy guests start requesting things. And you get and caught by Joe on there. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Uh, <laughs> and the DJ, he like came up. He's like, I know, I know what you said. I want to respect you. But people are asking, yep. what do you think? And at that point, I'm just like, just give the people what they want. It's fine. <laughs> We're all good. Um, but yeah, the two of them are pretty integral in my wedding. And just realizing, I mean, everybody says like something goes wrong at everyone's wedding. I mean, other than one of Jordan's groomsmen just being sick and we had an usher stand in, I mean, really nothing went wrong. And I have a lot of, of credit to give for those two people. Also probably Peyton Carolis, my personal attendant, which Peyton Rowe, I don't, Ooh, do you know, yeah. she went to Simpson. No. She's a boss. So okay. probably she, if I saw her face, she probably. probably put out fires and then didn't tell me about them. Sure. But um, yeah, just having those people. And it's like, if you can have someone like just shielding the, the mm-hmm. especially, oh my gosh, it's always when people get their hair done, it's like, the guys forgot the cake or the, <laughs> I can't find my shoes or whatever. Like, don't take that to the bride. Like, yes. bing, 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 like deflect it, give yeah. it to someone else. Like, yeah, that was for sure probably Peyton. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what yeah. you need. I think you need people like that in your corner. Yeah, I think that's one of my biggest pieces of advice to brides is to have a personal attendant or two like we obviously are there to help your day too but to have someone that knows you and to be able to bring you the drinks when we're off you know putting out the big fires having someone there to just really worry about the personal things I had to and they literally made my day go so well and um I think that's just a big thing too I know they're not vendors but just having someone Mm -hmm. close that knows you and knows what you would want sure yeah and I know for my wedding day like I said it wasn't exactly how we planned it because we were planning to do a beachfront wedding and then Mm -hmm. reception back here in Iowa but for ours I I, there was a couple things that stuck out to me that were like if I could tell other people to avoid one of them was like no one came to get the girls when the wedding ceremony was starting so like we were all lined up waiting for like five (laughs) minutes playing music and we're like no, and then someone had to go, but like, the wedding started because they're all like, there talking. Wait, like, is she not coming? Right. And I'm like, I can see her through the window. Like, I can, not her, but I can see the girls in there. I'm like, 
they're right there. Like <laughs> I'm like waving an uncle or something. I'm like, go, someone go get them. Like we just didn't think of that little detail. You needed a day of coordinator. Right, right. Well, then the other piece was like we had a quarter of three strand ceremony, but it got brought. It just wasn't set up. So mm-hmm. then we were like, our officiant was reading it and we're like looking we're like, and it, again, I look through the window, I can see it. And I'm like, it never got brought out here. So it's like little things like that. Right. Um, and then uh, there wasn't someone wrangling the ring bears when they were coming down. So yeah. the kids were just like ha- loitering in the aisle. <laughs> and I'm like, get out of there. So then like, she's walking down the aisle and I'm like trying and no one would just grab the kids. So it's like, yeah. li- I mean, things you couldn't even foresee. Yeah. Um, the other th- funny, not so funny thing was like my mic or our mics when we did our vows, the DJ that was running the mics just shut the audio off. Like, cause he thought we didn't want our f- people to hear our private vows. And it was like, that was never discussed. It was like things like mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, yeah. there are just so many little things, but mm-hmm. I talk about all the negative things. It was a great time. We, right. we had a great wedding, but um, I just, it's interesting. Like, the things that you can pass on to people. Mm-hmm. Um, what has been some of the things like the vendors that you've found that are helpful one for just to have a really good fill in the blank? Like what's probably your one, top one or two vendors that you're like, if people are on the fence, like, Oh, you definitely need this. Whether, I mean, obviously like day of coordination is your yeah. one thing, but mm-hmm. aside from that, like what are some of the other ones you highly recommend your clients? Like, Hey, if you're thinking about cutting this, like you said, to fill a budget, like you should really consider like trying to keep this in the budget. Oh, that's a good question. Well, I think photography, obviously, right. like, um, we wanted videography. Actually, I think we talked to you about it, but it just, we were broke grad school kids, <laughs> sure. and, you know, and it, there's a lot of time and effort and work that goes into that. And so we didn't get that. And so it makes me sad. Um, not that I regret it because it just wasn't possible for us. Um, I wish we had it, but, um, for sure investing in, you know, if you want to do video or photo or b- both, whatever your means are, mm-hmm. um, just to have those tangible things because, that is what's going to be passed down for generations. Those are the things that are going to hang in your living room. You know, those are the memories that you're going to want to keep. And so having a person that reflects your style, because everyone's photography yeah. style is different, their editing style, um, your relationship with that photographer, like if you can do um, like an engagement session or, or meet them a couple times before your wedding so that they can kind of learn how you and your spouse work together and your mannerisms like that is really important, I think, um, especially for something as big as a wedding. Sure. Yeah. And I've noticed too, people that try and skimp on like get an inexperienced photographer that's cheaper and then they just have the really bad. I mean, this goes with any vendor, right? Like Mm -hmm. someone that doesn't have the experience or that focuses in weddings can really make your day. Like you said, not fun. Like, Oh, I like, I didn't have to think about anything. It's like, that helps having experienced vendors. That's, that's a great one. What about you, Kayla? Any, any vendors that if they're thinking about cutting it or like getting a cheaper version, what's the thing you would encourage a client to really reconsider? Makeup and hair. Like Mm -hmm. I think there are so many brides who, um, are like, oh, I can just do it myself, which if your bridesmaids want to do it themselves, okay. But I think they just keep it on track. And then also if you have that trial ahead of time, you know what you want, they know what you want, all of that. Um, and then you kind of have a little bit more control over everyone's look. So, you know, your crazy sister isn't showing up with like the dark, crazy (laughs) makeup or whatever. Um, I say leave it to the professionals. I just did my makeup recently at a wedding, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I should have paid someone to do this. Um, But I think especially for the bride, make sure, yeah, 100%. And make sure they fit again with you because um, you don't always know. And then having that trial, I went to my hair trial, and I just told Kenzie this the other day. (laughs) I went to my hair trial and I left and I hated it. And I was like in tears and it was nothing that she did. It's just like, it was not what I was wanting. And I'm not the type to complain, but I remember my husband was like, you need to say something. Literally ended up loving my hair the day of because I said something and just having that trial was so important because I would have hated every second of it. Again, it it was still beautiful, but it just wasn't what I was wanting. So nothing against my hairstylist, but. And 90% of vendors want to hear that. Yes. Like I'm certainly not a stylist by any means, but like you probably have better insight than I do with Paige, but like they want to know that because they want you to be happy with it. They want that feedback. And that's what we tell our clients. We're like, you're not going to hurt our feelings. Trust me. Uh, We want this day to be yours. And if it's not right, tell us. And it's kind of nice to have that third party. Actually, we had a client tell us that not long ago. They're like, we just, honestly, if something does go wrong, I don't want to have to like have that resentment towards my family. And I'm like, no, that's totally valid. And I'm glad that you shared that because that's why we're here. So yeah, I I totally agree with that too. But give your vendors feedback. They want, they want to do a good job for you and they want you to enjoy it and to like it, especially if it's, you know, your look, because you're going to, if you feel confident and like, 
every bride deserves to feel pampered and special on their day. And like, I think that's totally yeah. something that yeah. you absolutely need to look into doing and with a vendor. Just helps with the timeline too, mm-hmm. keeping everyone on track. Cause they've done this a million times before, so they know how to keep it going. And yeah, I just think that's, that's something that I think would be helpful. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know for, for Paige and I, obviously video was an important thing for me. So mm-hmm. I hired the best dude in the country that I knew was from Nashville. So he drove, he was, we were supposed to get married in the panhandle. So he was mm-hmm. like an hour away. So he drove, when he found out our wedding was relocated, he just oh drove gosh. like 12 hours to Iowa to go do it, which is really cool. But people were like, oh, like my photographer was asking, she's like, oh, did, was it weird having another person shoot your wedding? And I'm like, no. And like, are you worried? I'm like, no, because I hired the best guy I know. Right. And I know it's going to be great. And I don't have to think at all. Like, mm-hmm. that's the nice thing. And just like the peace of mind of just being like, oh, I've got someone that's going to take care of me. You know, yeah. I think that's a, a big piece. Um, kind of on the on the funny side, what what would be like the biggest mishap of a wedding you've attended or been involved in that you've seen or be like, oh my gosh, like, is there any of these funny stories? You don't have to say whose wedding or who the vendor was, but Uh like (laughs) any, any funny things that stick out to you? Cause like I I will, I will start to give you guys a a break here. Um, (laughs) when I was at my wedding, um, my DJ was told a certain list of music you could play. And my mom's now husband, uh, went up and requested polka music and he'd had quite a bit to drink. And my <laughs> DJ's like, sorry, dude, not doing that. So he threw a complete fit and was like cussing out our DJ. And oh, I heard, no. I heard about it. Like I thought they were joking. I'm like, there's no way. So I go to the bathroom and I'm like taking a leak and he's in the uh, urinal next to me. And he's like, just want to let you know, like I may have said some choice words <laughs> to the DJ. <laughs> and I'm like, that was real. And there was all this drama happening, like, because all my groomsmen had, like, their ex-girlfriend show up to my wedding uninvited and try and, like, oh, no. not crash it, but, like, you know, wear a little red dress and try to, like, you know. And How I'm just, many ex-girlfriends were there? Dude, college was crazy. I, I, <laughs> I've been with Paige Roll for storm. 12 years. So, like, I was the only one that was, like, <clears throat> locked down the whole time. So, I'm just watching, like, all this crazy shit happen in college. So, it was kind of fun oh to, like, gosh. see the ex- Like, it's like a Matthew McConaughey movie. Like, all the <laughs> ex-girlfriends show up and start trying to cause drama. I'm like, Jeez. see ya. Like, I saw a girl crying outside after the uh, ceremony or reception. There's, like, oh some. Oh, my and I'm gosh. Like, not even going to ask. Like, don't care. It's not, not my, my problem. <laughs> not my problem. Oh, geez. So it's what with that in mind, yeah. what any any crazy, fun, memorable, funny stories that have happened oh, that man. you've been involved in? Fun. I, I haven't memorable. had any funny ones. I had one that made me really sad. And it was just, it's technology. It can be wonderful or terrible. It was, I was at a wedding a couple months ago. And um, the they had, you know, when everyone was kind of sitting down, getting ready for the wedding, there's music playing over the loudspeaker. Um, and that was fine. But then when the ceremony started, it was like, when the pastor was talking, the music would stop. But then the minute you stopped speaking to the microphone, the music from overhead would start playing. Oh, in the middle of the ceremony? In the middle of the ceremony. So during the couple's vows and like everyone's looking around and, you know, you can tell the couple's uncomfortable and everybody in the crowd's uncomfortable. Then people start making comments and they're like, this is terrible. And I feel so bad, but like everyone can hear it. And so I just felt so sad for them in that moment because it was like, and they wrote their own vows and they were really sweet. But like, I feel like they kind of got robbed of that like sentimental moment because Mm -hmm. of like the technology issue so that's just something like i'm like hyper aware of now when we go into things like let's check three times over to make sure everything's like working because you don't want to take that from somebody if you can avoid it sure um my friend got married a couple years ago probably like four years ago now and um there was supposed to be a party bus to pick us all up and they called her in the middle of her ceremony. So she didn't have her phone, thank God. And they called her and they were like, Hey, we have a broken window. We can't come pick you up. So then I, I think there were like eight or nine of us on each side. So there's like 20, 25 people just like standing, like, what the heck do we do? So we just had to pile into minivans and call people (laughs) like literally to drive. I mean, everyone had left because we stayed and took pictures afterwards. So we had to wait on people to come pick us up. So that's where I'm like, if Kenzie and I were there, <laughs> honestly, okay. So if Kenzie and I were there, it would have been taken care of. We would have been like, nope, you're bringing something. Because by the time she called them back and they're like, well, we could bring this or this. Like, she's like, no, just forget it. Um, we would have had it figured out. It might not have been the same party bus, but you know, whatever. After that wedding, I was kind of when I came back to Kenzie and I was like, okay, so maybe it wasn't four years ago. Mm-mm. I'll have to ask her when she got married. Um, I came back and I was like, I think I want to do some wedding planning. Like, 
But I, I was, you know, that imposter syndrome. Like, you feel like you're just not cut out for it. And, like, I was like, do I have to go back to school for that? Like, no one would take me seriously. And then I just, like, let it go. Like, we talked about it for a little bit and then just, like, let it go. But I think that after that wedding was really, mm-hmm. like, that kind of, like, pivotal point uh, um, point for me that I was like, wait, I actually might want to do this. Right. And then just went up and down from there. <laughs> well, and, and through this conversation, both of you guys have kind of mentioned, like, the – if it failed, am I qualified? Like where, (laughs) I mean, obviously you guys are new in the business, but where do you think those insecurities come from or have people projected those insecurities to you? Or do you just kind of, is it a limiting self-belief because it's so new? It's like, what are people going to say? Are they going to like, who would trust me type of thing? Where do you think those, these things come from? Um, I know I always play it safe. I don't, I'm not one to just move across the country. Like some of us, um, (laughs) I definitely play it safe. And so I think just, worrying about what other people's will think or not believing in me. I think that's just my own, my own insecurity. I don't think that's ever really been pushed on me by anyone. But, um, I think also like when we, when we book someone or, you know, we just had a styled shoot recently and the amount of people that said yes to us and Kenzie and I are like, why are they doing this for us? Like, it's just so crazy. And so I think, and then just the words of encouragement from them afterwards, it's just kind of hard to take, but it's like, okay, I need to believe in that. And like, these people are saying this, they're not just saying that because, you know, they want to make me feel better. But I think that's Mm -hmm. helped too, to see like their beliefs in us and all of that. But, um, I don't know. I think just to each other, like, you know, there'd be a day that, I, Kenzie and I would be talking and she'd be like, I don't know. I don't think we can do this. Like, this is so much. And I'd be like, no, we're going to do it. It's fine. And then the <laughs> next day I'd come and be like, I don't know, Kenzie, this is a lot. Like, you know, find the next barrier. And then she'd be like, nope, we're going to do it. Like, this will be great. And this is how we're going to do it. And so I just think we've truly just kind of pushed each other, even in like those low points of um, doubting ourselves. So I don't yeah. know. I think another thing, too, is we live in a society that um, I am all for education. I want to preface with that. Um, but we're in this the last decade, two decades of like you have to go to college. You have to mm-hmm. get the degree. You have to get the certification. You have to get this. And like I've done that. I've done it twice. I've got like four certifications and I love those things. I learned a lot in that process. But there's so much to be said for the Internet and the resources that are available and really trial and error and failing. Like people are scared to fail because we have these ideals or societal norms that, you know, hide your failures and just show your milestones. And like I don't subscribe to that. Like we learn through our failure and some things are figure outable. And if you have people and you have really the courage to ask, like, I think that's a hard saying, like Kayla and I, yeah. we like looked at each other one time and we work in healthcare. Like we are all about building rapport with people and getting to know patients. But when you do it like on your own terms and you have to you, like put on, put on your big girl pants and <laughs> like, we're going to have to talk to people. We're gonna have to ask questions. We're going to have to be vulnerable. We're going to have to put ourselves out there. And like being able to get over that little bit of fear, I think has changed things significantly. Yeah. And again, we're early on this. We're still learning this. We're still putting this into practice, but I just think there's this big opportunity for people to be entrepreneurs or like learn how to figure things out because the things and the resources that are available now um, didn't exist, you know, 50 years ago and people were still doing it then. So I think you just need to have a will to learn and have that like failure, um, mentality and know like it is going to happen, but then you're going to learn from it and then it's going to propel you forward. I love that. And it's so unique too, because, um, and you'll see this too, as you guys gain confidence in yourselves, um, people won't take you seriously until you do. Mm -hmm. So once you get out there and you're like, we're doing this, like, this is what we're doing. We're here to help. Like, that's when people are like, Oh, like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, but if you're kind of like, like mm-hmm. then people are going to be like, uh, you know, yes. <laughs> I yeah. wanna, so I think that's a big piece. Um, the other piece, which I'm sure you guys are figuring out with doing um, styled shoots and events and trying to connect with other people is like the wedding space is so unique because there's so much collaboration across vendors. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about your experience as you jumped in. Cause like you said, no one knew you from Adam, but they're like, yeah, I'll do a style shoot. And you're like, well, really? Okay. Like, tell me about that experience. Yeah. I think the response just from the other vendors have been amazing. So, um, Kenzie had posted something in one of the Facebook wedding groups about, um, you know, taking on clients and, um, the photographer that does her family photos reached out and was like, Hey, let's sit down and talk. And she's the one who really pushed us Mm -hmm. to, um, 
plan the styled shoot. And I think even that just seemed, I remember thinking back and thinking that seemed like such a huge feat of like planning that. Cause she's like, okay, you got to do this. Like, it's basically a, a small wedding that you're planning. Um, and then she's like, okay, but you shouldn't have to spend that much money. Cause at this point we're like, we have no income. I mean, our first wedding was like, <laughs> we mm-hmm. almost did it for free because sure. like first wedding. Right. And so and it is the biggest wedding to date oh on gosh. our books too. And it was, it was wonderful, but they yeah. They got a hell of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, anyone else want to do this for free? We were like, tell all your friends as their friends are already married, you know, but it went great. It was fantastic. (laughs) But, um, you know, so we started planning that styled shoot. And then it was just, again, like you reach out to someone and we were honest with everyone. Like, hey, we're new to the Mm -hmm. business. Um, We're planning a styled shoot. And like just the amount of yeses that we got. And, you know, even if they said no for whatever reason, but we'd love to work with you in the future or we can offer this or this. And that was just amazing. And then. Just even after that, um, just the response and, you know, I keep telling um, the videographer at our um, styled shoot, she's get, she's a photographer getting into videography and she um, has recommended us to probably three or four of our couples just on Facebook. Like she'll just tag us and then they book with us and I'm like, Amanda, we might have to give you a, some sort of a raise, sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's just been amazing and seeing that community really support us even just on like in those Facebook groups has been fantastic. Um, we've just started asking our couples, you know, where they've heard of us and, and most of the time it's from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. that's just been great. The, the tie-ins are interesting because again, we've had Paige and I've had a lot of experience going cause one, she was dragging me to wedding shows and yeah. expos for like five years. And I'm like, no, oh, with the free cake. I'm like, no, you're trying to pressure me to propose. So <laughs> it worked though. eventually. So. Um, but I think it's interesting, like the different marketing stuff, usually you can do a style sheet. You can, you can be, a, a booth vendor. Um, we've also did one where um, I think Paige was um, doing updos at uh, Jasper Winery had an event like for because they they host a lot as a location, but then they have other vendors there and like they did like the wedding amazing race there, and then you meet other people mm-hmm. and you kind of get connected. So I think that that helps a lot too. The one like you did mention too is like the referral bonuses because sometimes that incentivizes people to give you a kickback or yeah. whatever. Like if a photographer refers you a client, then the day of the wedding, like you can give them a little like bonus or a gift card or something mm-hmm. nice to, or a little gift basket or something. Right. There's, there's so many ways you can like cross promote and cross pollinate because everyone's, everyone's trying to do the same thing, like yeah. give people a really good wedding experience. So, and I think that kind of surprised me going into this. Cause I remember, um, talking about reaching out to different vendors and I was like, but what if they don't want to talk to us? What if they're intimidated by us or, you know, and I don't think we've had any of that, mm-hmm. even when talking with other um, event pl- wedding planners, they just like have open arms and are just like, yeah, let's sit down and have coffee and chat. And I think that's just surprised me. And it's just been so welcoming because I was really scared about that. And I'm not great with conflict sometimes. So I'm just like, I don't want people to dislike us right away. But like, it's just been the complete opposite, which has been really cool. Yeah. And equally knowing like things like that are going to happen. It's like in the yeah. industry, but like just being able to find like your people and like have like surround yourself with people that are like-minded. Um, you know, I've worked in some situations in my career where it's kind of been like you over your friend or you over your coworker. And, um, that's just not it for me. Like I, like, I truly believe there's room for everybody and like, let's bring people up along together. It's not going to be this me versus you thing. And you know what? Some people don't work that way. There are different insecurities. There's things going on. Um, and just being able to be like, okay, like, thank you. I respect you, but like, I'm going to move past and like being able to like make those decisions, um, I think is something that, you know, we might have to do in the future, but that's okay. Because, it is what it is. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I totally connect to that. I know even like this week I met with two different other videographers that would be my competition, but mm-hmm. I love meeting with other people that do what I do because you can bounce ideas. They're always curious. Like the, for me, it's the ins and outs. Like, oh, what, what do you shoot with? What do you edit with? How mm-hmm. like how do you do the thing you do? But then for me, it's always we get into talks about business of like, oh, mm-hmm. what are you doing to market yourself or what's working for you? And um, I think that's the uniqueness too because everyone has – differentiators, right? You guys will be known for something if you're not already of like, oh, they really do this specially or they do this or venues that have, well, it's kind of more rustic or it's more this or it's kind of far outside of Des Moines or whatever. There's like right. things that people will do. But my, my biggest or one of my pieces of advice to you guys would be figure out what that thing is and wear it with a badge of pride. So mm-hmm. when someone meets you, it's like, yeah, we do day of coordination for weddings, 
but we typically do this or we're known for this or we, you know, there's a mm-hmm. thing about us that makes us unique. Like for me, it's, you know, I produce videos, but I mainly shoot corporate and fitness. That's like my two things mm-hmm. um, with a marketing spin. So like that's, that's the uniqueness for me, but trying to figure out what that is. So then when someone's trying to vet if you're the right choice or not, you can kind of just spell it out. Like, so on the spectrum, here's like the ultra high expensive, like you could go to the tea room downtown and that's like kind of more luxury. Like you have a jazz band, whatever, like if that's your vibe, mm-hmm. you could go backyard wedding and only spend like a thousand dollars total on right. everything. And it's like, that's your own experience. But then like we fall here in the mm-hmm. spectrum and here's, here's why people pay the price that it is. And here's how this experience helps. I think that's mm-hmm. always a nice thing to like, people are making all these decisions. And like you said, it can be daunting when mm-hmm. you're like the person, you're the bride and you're like mm-hmm. stressed out and everything. It's like, here's where the prices start. Here's what the upsells look like, but here's where we can fit to really make it. So we take that burden off of you on the day of. So you're like you said, I didn't have to think on my wedding day and that was great. And I want to do that for you. Like that's what, <laughs> that's like a really good sales pitch to do it for it. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. okay. So quick, quick fire round. Sometimes I'll do a lightning round. That's, that's what this is. Just quick questions. Um, fun things. Um, it can be a one word answer or whatever. Um, but some fun things. Um, what are some of the best groom gifts that you've seen at weddings like Pete or what you've heard or fun things that are not your typical um, gift the bride would give to a groom on their wedding day? Ooh, tie bar. Tie bar? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And like I've seen engraved like initials on them for like the groom, but then that's something like you can keep and have professionally too later on, like a nice little accessory. I love that. This is a little different, but um, I saw one of my friends, her husband made all of um, his groomsmen um, – koozies like leather koozies he made them by hand yeah wow yeah and everything and i thought that was really fun um so i mean if you could do something like that too it's so simple but um something just to remember your day with and you know it's still manly it's not over the top (laughs) sure i would chime in as a man boudoir photos because i got those (laughs) on my wedding and that was awesome that's true you know i've seen that i don't know if i'd be ever be gutsy enough enough to do that but yeah, that's I, a, that well, is I literally fun. wept when I got them because I knew like Paige was super insecure about doing that. And like I saw the pictures and I was like, these look so cool. Like you, you put yeah. yourself out there and you know, it was like, I know she was afraid to do it, but she had talked about doing it years ago and it was yeah. kind of fun. Like as like a guy, really vulnerable and special. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I got, it was kind of funny cause I got those and I was looking at them and the photographers taking pictures and stuff. And my groomsmen are on the other side of the room and they're like playing music, laughing. And I'm like sitting there crying and they're like. <laughs> And, what is and going Dylan on? Gray like turns the TV down. He's like, probably shouldn't be blasting like <laughs> country music while you're crying. Over here. It, was, it was kind of funny. So I'm having a moment. <laughs> yeah, but we did for for ours. We did. Um, I bought all the guys the the shoes because I'm a huge Chelsea boot guy. So oh, okay. I got. So we had special like everyone had matching Chelsea boots. But um, then I got tie bars with engraved initials, mm-hmm. and I gave everyone their their tie too. So it was like a, a tie in there. Yeah, so nice tie tie in. But I like it. I can't even remember what I got my wedding party. It was so long ago. We did tie bars for our guys. Yeah. See, we didn't, again, we didn't have a ton of money, so I feel like everything was so, yeah, I can't remember. Adam probably chose it, so they probably got nothing. Because sure. <laughs> he but, couldn't make a decision. He's probably like, looks good. Yeah. It's crocodile themed, so it works out. Um, what is your guys' go-to reception song that has to be on the playlist if they're going to be doing a reception? Return of the Mac, obviously. What it is, what it is, what it isn't. <laughs> Something, 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 something. I can't remember the rest of it. Sorry. <laughs> what is your go-to song? This is so lame. Dancing Queen. Okay. Oh, just, Kayla. We are so different. I know. We are. We talk about that with music all the time. No, I just feel like that's a great end of the night You know what? Song. It, it's good for all generations. I will yeah. say that. I tend to be more selfish when it comes to music at receptions. I'm mm. like, I just want the good stuff. Yeah. And my DJ was like, we need to play older music. Sure. I was like, okay. Yeah. But. No, and I've. I have so many stories of crappy DJs over the years that I've been where like they lose the crowd. You have 50 people and they play some shit song and then mm-hmm. everyone's leaving. I always say like, there's no shame and pausing it. Hit the next song. Like yeah, you need to go to banger to just get them back. Cause I'm like, if you lose the dance floor, it's gone for mm-hmm. like at least an hour, if not the rest of the night. So it's always hard. Yeah. Um, for me, I would say the cha cha slide, man. That's oh, the <laughs> slide. Oh. That's Ryan. <laughs> To the left, yeah, to the right. Like, but whatever. everyone knows it. Crisscross, yeah. right? <laughs> the whitest dance song you've ever been a part of. No, I think I think the the fun thing that Paige and I did, which I was I encourage couples to do, is if you're like the last at the dance floor, whatever, 
we had the very last song was like our song mm -hmm. and there was like hardly anyone there, which was kind of cool. We had like this private moment when yeah. they were kind of tearing down. DJ just played the last song. It was a really cool thing. So I mm -hmm. would say like, if they're thinking of like the set list, like don't forget yourselves while you're in there. You yeah. Know? We did the same thing. Um, I think it's kind of becoming a trend to like kick everyone out and do that. I actually was listening to a podcast yesterday that was like, please don't do that because like the amount of time it takes to get everyone out of there, mm -hmm. like it just takes so much time, but there's just something special about, yeah, everyone's still tearing down, but you still just have that moment together. And it might be like your first true moment together throughout the whole day, which is kind of unfortunate, but yeah. really special moment. One, one of the things we did, Paige and I made a, a point to, um, we just kind of took time away and there was like these Adirondack chairs, like probably a good mm -hmm. stone's throw away. We just chilled for a bit and just kind of mm -hmm. watched and we were just like catching up and you know, that was a really nice to have those yeah. baked in moments in the day. So huge yeah. thing. Um, your favorite trendy, non-traditional practices you're seeing right now in terms of like, um, union ceremony or like, um, a fun thing like people getting carried in and their grand entrance or something unique or different that you've seen. That's kind of a fun thing people are doing. I will say something that I'm glad we're getting rid of is the garter toss mm. okay. and, um, and the bouquet toss really. I mean, I don't mind the bouquet toss, but the garter toss, <laughs> it's awkward for everybody. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So like, I don't think any of our brides are doing that. And if they are great, if that's your thing, that's like fine. Going, going up the dress to get the, yes. yep. yeah, we did that at my wedding and I, my, I said, I'll do it. But if they play that freaking um, magic Mike song, yep. not yep. doing it. I'm like anything else. And I looked before I was sitting there with my drink and the DJ started playing the wrong song. And I just looked at him like, <laughs> I'm not doing this. Like, and then he put on pour some sugar on me. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Like it's, I told him beforehand, I'm like, do not play that song. Cause I'm yeah. like, my grandma's here, man. Like I'm right. not, you know, <laughs> but then my father-in-law comes up, he's six, eight, this big, tall dude in the middle of all my heads up her dress. And he's no. like, what are you doing under there? I'm like, Oh my God. Oh. It's like this awkward, this, the lights went dark. Cause I'm, he's blocking the sun. I'm like, what happened? So yeah, kind of a fun. What yeah. about you? Any, any non-traditional? Yeah. Well, um, something that brides are starting to do, which I love and wish that I would have known is that, um, they're like dedicating their bouquet to someone yeah. like influential in their life. Um, some, for some people it's their mom, for some people it's like a godparent or whatever, a friend, but like dedicating that and like letting the bride have an opportunity to like choose someone special for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. So I like that one. That's great. Yeah. I think the, the other one that I've seen is people cutting out some of the traditional, like the longest um, married people dance because mm -hmm. people say like mm -hmm. you might be married for a long time but it might not be a very good marriage you're just too stubborn <laughs> to, like things that's like that it's like a grouchy old couple like <laughs> we're just gonna die together I guess <laughs> so like, that's kind of a, another one um, another question favorite wedding dessert or different desserts that you've seen people do mm -hmm. outside of just your typical wedding cake or whatever I am okay Jordan and I don't really like cake um, we wanted to do cactus bread because mm -hmm. I love that. And they didn't let us. So I'm a little salty about that still. But um, bars, like cookie bars, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like having variety and stuff and like a little less like formal. I feel like people are liking that better yeah. and like having sure. that option. Sure. Yeah. What about you, Kayla? I love cheesecake. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll take cake any day of the week, but I love cheesecake. Um, but yeah, we, we just did cake and cupcakes for ours, though. You know, and okay, Jordan and I just celebrated our five year anniversary like last week. And it's crazy because like all the things now that people are talking about and doing, I'm like, I didn't know these things were options. Yeah. Like no one was telling me what I had to do, but it's like, I don't know, I guess either I was just blissfully unaware or I don't know. It was just do the traditional thing. Like I did the garter toss. And I'm like, I was mm -hmm. so uncomfortable that I didn't realize I, I didn't have to do yeah, that. Same. No one yeah. told me to do it, but yeah. I did it. And I'm like, I really wish I didn't do that. Right. Sure. So yeah. I just, I like that we're moving into that space where like couples just like can truly make it about them. You're not just like following a program or an itinerary, like you're creating it to fit you and to like reflect you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we just hammer into our clients is like, is this you? What is your look? Let's do what, what is you yeah. so that it's not uncomfortable in any way. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. We did a garter toss too. And not it sounds like that's a, con a consistent uh, – I've heard a lot of people say that. They're like – feel kind of socially pressured to do it. Yeah. Or the clinking of the glasses and the kiss. You need to do it – All like night long. 200 yeah. times. You're like, oh, my God. I was at a wedding recently and they did that. I'm like, can yeah. you stop? Like, right. you're yeah, – sure, you know. And then I've been to some like Baptist <laughs> weddings that they don't even do a reception. Like you, d there's no dance because they don't dance. So they don't even have like a first oh. dance. They don't kiss. They're Like you have a meal and you leave at 7 p.m. And like the – the, that whole practice is so unique because, like, they'll have a uh, an engagement party and, mm -hmm. like, 
grandma's giving the bride like lingerie and like <laughs> sex tips. And they're like, Jesus, like, this is like not, you know, like we can do away with, I'm, I'm not a girl, but I'm like, I don't know if I want to be getting some of that stuff from my grandma. Right. right. Those no were mine from 1904. I'm like, yikes. Um, other, but no dancing. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no dancing, dancing, but grandma will give you some lingerie. Yeah, kind of a weird, weird one. Um, favorite um, experiences in terms of like, Things that people have had, like I went when I went to Scott and Kenzie's, they had a donkey bringing drinks around to people at the reception. Mm-hmm. Um, any kind of fun, new, trendy things that people are doing that bring an, an odd thing to uh, a wedding, yeah, um, in a good way. I wouldn't say this is odd, but I love the live artists. Oh, yeah, I think that's so fun, and I would love to have a picture like hanging on my wall that someone painted for us of our wedding day. So I, I love that trend. Um, other than that, I'm trying we to have think. a couple this summer. Our June first wedding, they're gonna have donkeys or something doing something. Yeah. Um, or like some people like get their dogs and their cats yeah. and stuff involved. And I don't know. I think a lot of more venues are like embracing that, um, letting them have like their pets and stuff involved yeah. in whatever fun way. Or like the fun um, traveling bars because like obviously if you have a bar at your venue that's great, but if you can choose to bring someone in that has like specialty drinks and all of that, or um, you know a a drink trailer. I think that's so fun, especially if you have a kind of indoor outdoor wedding and to be able to incorporate that. I think that's just really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people were talking, the topic was um, raising money or wedding, like dollar mm-hmm. dance, whatever dollar dance alternatives. My favorite one that I saw was having uh, the bride and groom bartend for 30 minutes. Oh, and that's you, fun. You tip your favorite bartender <laughs> and whoever wins has to do something or they have to like chug a drink or something like there's some kind of like fun that's incentive. That's a great idea. Cause mm-hmm. then you're like, you're not just giving it like grandma's like, here's two dollars, like keep yeah. the change. You know, it's like you can kind of make it more of a game. But then again, the couple has to like be involved, but they make yeah. it like a short sprint of like, you know, here, tip this person, tip that person. Mm-hmm. Another one, I went to a, a friend's wedding in Nashville and they had a signature drinks that were named after their animals, but yeah. it's their the husband's favorite drink and then the wife's. And mm-hmm. I'm a bourbon guy and he this was like a blueberry bourbon. I probably, good. probably had yeah. me about 15 of those. It was good. <laughs> Oh, oh my, it was good. So like you got to yeah. find find the right combos, I think. Yeah. I don't know if I told you about this. We went to a wedding this summer that they had like a cigar hour. Okay. Which sounds great, but it's like out in this like enclosed. It's kind of outdoors, but it's like enclosed and like I walked out there and I was like, I can't breathe out here. And like everyone's just like puffing away and like it's like bourbon and cigars and I was like it was enclosed. They weren't outside. I mean, it was outside like I think there were three walls and then like it was open, but it just was not enough airflow. And so Mm -hmm. I was just like, I cannot be out here. And then everyone (laughs) smelled like cigars and like no one enjoyed it. (laughs) I don't know. It sounded like a great idea, but I felt like you, it was only like 30 minutes. And so everyone's like, oh, we have to do this right now. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I don't know. It was a little much. Mm. Logistics. They matter. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then aerosol spray to get that cigar smell (laughs) out of your suit. Maybe some fans. I don't know. It just like, there was a, there was a pregnant woman out there and she's like, nope, I'm going back inside. Like it was bad. Sure. Sure. No, I think that's, that's a big one. Um, any, any, um, union ceremony things that you guys have seen that are fun. We've seen the lighting of the candle. If it's more of a church Mm -hmm. related ceremony, um, sand, what other things have you guys seen that are kind of fun? Um, different ones. Um, I've seen people pour different, um, kinds of wine into like a decanter and then like take a drink, like, um, Mm -hmm. finding two wines. We were going to do that for our wedding, but instead, this is kind of an oops. Instead, we, um, had a box that I bought and then you put a bottle of wine in there and lock it and then you open it on your first anniversary. But, um, my uncle placed it out there for us and then didn't put the lock out there. So it came time for it. And Adam and I are just looking at it like, um, so we just put the bottle behind the box and like, no, everyone probably <laughs> knew, but we what actually, the hell's going on yeah, there? we actually ended up buying, my mom also had to go buy the wine, um, like an hour before the ceremony because we forgot about it. And she bought like a cheap, like Walmart wine, which is fine. Sorry, mom. But, um, we actually bought a really good wine our, on our anniversary or on our honeymoon and brought it back and ended up putting it in there and having that. But yeah, I've seen where people combine yeah. that. And what did um, Clinton and Mackenzie do with a box? With they they involved their their parents, and I couldn't remember the logistics of it. The do you remember what it was? Oh, the the ring box. Yeah, yeah. So at the um, beginning, they had a their ring box, and they just pa- passed it down the aisle, and each 
um, family member just prayed over it. Mm -hmm. And um, finally it was given to them when it was time to exchange rings. That was really cool. Yeah, I'd never seen that. And it was pretty quiet. Like, I don't think anyone else really knew about it. But, you know, the bride and groom didn't. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, and just a special way for everyone to like feel part of it, and like yeah. they all got to like bless them in whatever way that would like called them. So I thought that was really cool. I'm trying to think of other, I've seen people like tie like a they have different mm-hmm. like ropes or different things like that or strings, and they'll like tie like braid something and like put it on their mantle or something like that. Sure, but no, I think it's always fun putting those <laughs> this kind of tie to it. Like um, we went to a wedding in Omaha this last year that. The couple loved dancing, so they had like we had to leave early because our son was like getting tired. We had to drive back from Omaha, but they were gonna do like a dance off, and I wish I could have been there because the, the dude did the splits at my wedding oh my and does gosh. the worm and like gets in. I'm like, oh my god! So that that's always fun to like the personal tie-ins. Um, I've also seen like I shot uh, Diana Lickety's wedding, mm. and she wrote a song for her wife, and they had it like professionally sung. Like they hired an act or a singer to sing it. Oh my gosh! And played it for her, and that was a pretty cool moment. Um, it's my like, brother-in-law did that actually for my sister. Okay. They got married during COVID too. So their wedding like got real small, but yeah, he like sang and recorded a song and she didn't know. And like he played it, oh, I that's think so during sweet. their vows. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So I think the, the, obviously the more personal, the more small tie-ins are, are always uh, really helpful there. Yeah. Um, kind of, kind of tying it all together here. What would be like your guys' biggest advice for couples that are planning their wedding, they're kind of getting bogged down. Like what would be your advice to kind of make it more smooth, obviously hiring you guys to do it, but what are some tips to kind of give some peace of mind around the planning process to kind of take a deep breath and, and figure those things out? I would just say like, it's okay to be you. And like, yeah, sometimes like there are lots of beautiful things in the world and we're not all always going to be able to afford them. Like don't put so much pressure or stress on yourself to try to like have something that maybe isn't attainable. Like there are so many things like I couldn't afford flowers during our wedding. So like I made all of ours and it was like, it took a little bit of time, but like they turned out great and it was beautiful. And I probably saved thousands of dollars. So like, just be realistic and like, know that it's okay to not have, you know, certain things or, or have, you know, the, a budget that is extravagant. Um, I just, I, I, my biggest piece of advice is just be true to you mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, like your flowers really aren't going to matter that much. Like at the end of the day, it's going to matter that you enjoyed your wedding and you have memories and special times, you know, to, to look back on later. Yeah. You don't need that social media wedding. No, like I feel like nowadays that's what people strive for. Like they're getting all the extra things and that's great if you can afford that. But like, I really, I'm excited for one wedding that we have that like it's just going to be so low key and like outdoors and just it seems like it's going to be so much of them incorporated and i just love that for them and i wish that more people you know didn't feel the the pressure to to do everything especially cuz she's like i'm an only child so this is my mom's only chance and um to have you know have not planned mm-hmm. this wedding but they're still just sticking to it and just having a small um reception for them and i think that's really cool mm-hmm. That's great. Um, as, as we're kind of tying things together, where can people find more about you? Um, check you out on social media or your website or wherever you want to send people to learn more about the company. Yeah. Yeah. You can find us at um, jadenivyevents.com is our website. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, and um, Pinterest at Jaden Ivy Events. So, Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. Really do appreciate you guys giving yeah. the time and, and hopefully wish you guys all the best in the upcoming wedding season. And uh I'm always happy to talk shop. I always yeah. love that type of stuff. So thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, well, Thank Ryan. you. Yeah. And thanks for all your help. <laughs> sure. I'm like, hey, can you text Ryan and ask him about this? <laughs> like, we have a question for you, actually. So <laughs> Sure, sure. Yeah. Obviously not a wedding coordinator, but I think no. the, the business side is, yes. is daunting to a lot of people. And it helps I majored in that and love talking business because yeah. it's it's always fun to see classmates and friends and doing doing cool things mm, that scare yeah. you. And, and it's, it's exciting to, yeah. to see it happen. So my husband always says, you and Kenzie aren't going into this business because you're good business women. <laughs> you're good at planning weddings. You need someone to help with the business side of things. I'm like, that is true. That sure. is very fair. Sure. We'll, we'll get there maybe someday, <laughs> but like, yeah. Trial so, by fire. That's the best way to go. It. Jumping right in. So <laughs> thanks guys. Well, if you made it this far, make sure you give us a five-star review. If you're listening on iTunes, Apple, and subscribe on YouTube, if you haven't already, my name is Ryan Snod. It rhymes with odd. And you're listening and watching the rhymes with odd podcast. See you next episode. Peace. <laughs>